when you look at this back four, Steve Bold's been working with them. I don't think there is any danger of defeat against Southampton today. Absolutely not. I think Arsenal will score four today oh. because uh, everywhere you look, the movement. I don't think the I don't think the, the Southampton uh, defence, the way it is at the moment, will find them players with a map and a compass. The QPR need to win this game. They're at home. Why are they not playing with two strikers? That is a must not lose side rather than a, a side that's going out there to get all three points. Got to say though, just on the back of what you said, I know we haven't got in a lot of time, but what you just said it shows me the old old power. Act in football, you know, because you're saying the right things, but the evidence of everybody's own eyes tells you that Southampton are a sinking ship with Nigel Adkins and Joe. How nothing can you say personal, that? It's yeah, nothing they personal, didn't get beat last week. You're only as good as your last game, and they didn't oh, get come beat. Come on, come on. What, what are you saying? Okay, at the end of okay, at the end of today, if they go and get a result at Queens Park Rangers, yeah. they won't even be in the bottom three. We know that they're going to be around the bottom three for the, for the whole of the remainder of the season because of the personnel, but they can get better. All the goals we tell you about, this one is probably the most significant of the day. Which way's it gone, Lee? It's gone to the away side. Go on, then! <laughs> get in there! Go on, it's happen! Go on, it's happen! It's a corner, it come in, it got knocked out, back in again. Lambert done it, he got hit in the process, but he's gone up. But you know, sometimes you have to take one for the team. And he took it, he was brave enough, and Southampton are leading 1-0. And we said, it is the second phase, when the ball goes into the box, and I had this conversation with Kevin Bond on the train this morning, that I said the big thing with Queen's Park Rangers, they're okay when they're just playing in straight lines. When the ball goes into the box, it gets knocked down, no one reacts, no one sees danger, and no one anticipates danger, so you can then get across your marker. So it'll be interesting to see uh, if, if that's the way the goal went earlier. Uh, Bournemouth, everyone's outsiders, are absolutely flying. I think they're 13 games unbeaten under Eddie Howe. Sheffield United host uh, Scunfall. Notts County, who do a lot better away from home, they're away at Shrewsbury. But for me, the best one in this division is Doncaster to get back on winning ways away at Oldham. OK, uh, and League Two. League Two, we're going to be looking, obviously, I think mean, there should be a result come up here from uh, Gillingham. 1-0 down. Leaders against one of the bottom sides. And then you look at the bottom. Fleetwood versus Morecambe. That would have been an Ismian Premier League game about five years ago. The big game of the day is definitely at New York, New York Stadium. Not New, New York, New York uh, nightclub. Rotherham versus Paul Bell. First of all, I can't, I can't look at that and without telling you that Cholton were 2-0 down against Watford and they're now 4-3 up. And, 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 and obviously a player that people should definitely look out for at Watford is Matej Vedra. He's 20-year-old. He's on loan from uh, Udinese. He's got nine goals already this season and he's an absolute star in the, in the making. Just to let you know, a guy in the championship right on the stroke of half time Middlesbrough nil Watford won Darren I'll ask you you think he might have scored uh, your man Vidra M M Matej Vedra scores again <laughs> this is what I've been telling you all afternoon I'm surrounded by expertise the champs have given you your first goal scorers and the stats to bear in mind ahead of the games and this man here is the reason why we keep him in the studio every afternoon the big brain of the beautiful game what a big finish at the Medeski Stadium. Just as you join us, Reading have equalised. Adam Lafondre scoring a penalty in the 88th minute. West Brom throwing it away after being two goals to the good in front. And one man in the studio called it. Flash. When they went 4-5-1, they've almost been tempered. So when you 2-0 down, you throw caution to the wind. You go back to what you do best. And that's attack, attack, attack. Now, as soon as it went 2-1, we said, this team goes for 95 minutes. they got Lafondre on the bench. They've got Hunt on the Bench. You've got goals. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we hear from another goal going in there oh, well, and it's 3-2. Well, let's go to the bet button and see what the odds are on Reading uh, coming out on top from this uh, match because it's been an extraordinary <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, my word! Ben Butler! It's 3-2! <laughs>I'm Flash Gordon Watson and I'm with William Hill's top man, Rupert Adams, and together we're trying to find the winners and losers of the FA Cup third round fixtures. This is this is a manager in Chris Hewton who's had an unbelievable uh, FA Cup pedigree, obviously with his, with his days at, um, at Spurs. This is an opportunity to stop the rot. They've lost four games in a row in the Premier League. They're going to Peterborough. They are whipping boys at home because they just do not keep clean sheets. So I'd, a lot of people might look at Norwich and go, six to five, that's really good value. So on paper, you look at Norwich, 
Apart from a striker, Norwich are at full strength. I see this as being a very, very tight draw. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think there are goals in this. Um, Williamson's not good enough for this level for me. But like he's Mar not going to be marking anyone. No, he's got no one to mark. I if there was a Holt, if there was a Holt or a Morrison, I completely agree with you. Because then I would say that although I've gone for a draw, I'd be wrong and I fancy Norwich to win. Now I look, I think there's no goals in either side. What happened was, Suarez, my little mate, was jinking and jinking and jinking and jinking around the box. Defender played the ball off him. It popped up. Henderson came in and absolutely buried it from 20, 25 yards. What a goal. On another subject, Darren, listen to this. My little wing girl has just come back home and she's told me, Darren, that tie is very, very bright you're wearing today. She says, Anfield won't need lights. <laughs> hey, listen, Salmon is the new orange. Uh, Dave, <laughs> I, I want to know, how, how are um, Liverpool attacking? Because early on in the season, they're going two sideways. How are they doing now? Because, again, after the last two home games, they've been full throttle, attacking from everywhere, and they're almost like the Red Arrows. Are they enjoying themselves? Welcome to Sunday Night Live on Sports Tonight TV 498. I'm Flash Gordon Watson and tonight I'm joined by Talk Sports' very own Warren Halton and we're going to go through all the games that so far on the Premiership weekend. And Warren, first of all, who are the winners and losers from this weekend's Premiership? When people say to me about zone all this and zone all that, listen, get up against your marker, you had the ball, he doesn't, job done. Don't complicate it, it really is as simple as that. And because when you say about zonal marking, you're basically giving players excuses. And you give a player an excuse, they will jump all over it because they see it as a lifeline. Yeah, that's, it's got to be. It's like you say, it's not rocket science. You, you mark a man, you go for the ball. You start giving people, oh, you mark this part of the box, you mark that box. Like, it's just wait, waiting for somebody to make a mistake and then it's everybody else's fault except yours. Southampton got beat on the 5th of uh, November away at West Brom and it was absolutely dire. He had a meeting with the um, chairman on the 6th and everyone, I, I got loads of uh, texts and phone calls telling me that there's a new manager coming in. The new manager wasn't available. Funnily enough, so Nigel Atkins given a stay of execution. Three weeks after that, Pochettino leaves Espanyol through mutual consent. He then says, when he, when he joins Southampton, I've been scouting the team for the last four, five, six weeks. That's so, cool. so it's naughty that you've got, and we know it goes on, so let's not be naive, yeah. but it's naughty to then come out and mention it because basically all Nigel's been doing is working his absolute socks off yeah. with his backroom staff to warm the seat for somebody else. And I just, and I only blame one person, 